Yes. Okay, Oklahoma State goes to Austin and beats Texas 32-24. And there's no doubt we can we can roast Texas for falling apart in the fourth quarter again, but you got to give Oklahoma State credit, man. The formula continues to work. Just a reminder, the Oklahoma State formula, run the rock with Jalen Warren and play great defense. And, man, when this team needs a play, that Oklahoma State defense makes it. I mean, they time and time again this season. I mean, Spencer Sanders throws the pick in that game. They're down 17-3. to Looks like Texas is about to blow the thing open. And what happens? Jason Taylor makes a great read, great pattern recognition, breaks on the ball from depth, 85 yards later, pick six, and they were back in the football game. And it swung the momentum of the football game. And they they contained B. John Robinson similarly to the way that OU did. He scored three touchdowns, but it still felt like they kept him in check. I know that's yeah. weird because he scored three touchdowns. But all of a sudden, you look at the end of the game, OSU, they held Texas to 317 yards of offense. And you look at Texas's final six drives of the game, punt, 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 turnover on downs, interception. They ran 17 plays in those drives, 14 total yards of offense for Texas in their final six drives against that Pokes defense. Now, you can call it poor execution from Texas's offense, but – Oklahoma State's defense forced that poor execution, man. I mean, I continue to be impressed with how physical they're playing along the defensive line. And while OSU's defense was shutting Texas down in the fourth quarter, Oklahoma State's offense came to life a bit. In that second half, uh, Jalen Warren started ripping off some long runs. That offensive line started opening up some more holes. Spencer Sanders even made some nice throws, used his legs, had the touchdown running. They warmed down, man. They they went on the road and wore Texas down in their own house. Uh, Tanner Brown, shout out to the kicker, making all the kicks. Those were key. Now, some of Mike Gundy's decision-making, I was watching that game. It was driving me insane. I don't know how you Oklahoma State fans do this every week, but that's a hell of a win, Ted. It's a hell of a win for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah. It, and they would probably – they probably would have won the game even larger if they just listened to your formula from the beginning and don't throw the football with Spencer Sanders. He, he is – and it, it, it almost happened in this, this game, but they were able to overcome it. But he is a – a turnover waiting to happen at every single moment. What is it like over the last two years, 30 some turnovers more than any player in college football, something crazy like that. Um, it just, a lot of times it just kills their momentum. Um, I, if, if he wasn't, if he was just like a little bit better and didn't turn the ball over as much as he did this, Oklahoma State would be a dangerous football team, dangerous. But those turnovers and some of his poor decision making and, and poor throws hold them back quite a bit. But that is a that is a great win. I think I think Texas, after playing the Oklahoma game, whenever Oklahoma State started to to get some stops and make their way back into the game, I think they tightened up and. Casey Thompson looked really good early and slowly fell apart as that game rolled on. Yeah. And I wonder how much of, you know, the hand injury affect Casey Thompson, but it's, it, it's not an excuse, right? It, it, you, it's not an excuse. So that's just a, that's a big time win for Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy's had a lot of success going to Austin over the years. I will defend Spencer Sanders just a little bit. Now the interception was so bad and he, he did the surrender Cobra and I was like, Oh my God, the game's <laughs> over. I mean, it's over, but Tay Martin could have helped him out a little bit early in the game, put some good balls on, on their star wide receiver. Who's who I think is, I mean, he, he, he's shown that he can, he can be a big time player. We'll see 
what what kind of production he has the rest of the way, but he he's impressive at times, but had a few drops, you know, they would, but still, yeah, stick to the formula, Mike, <laughs> run it with Jalen Warren, keep playing great defense. I mean, that is, that's it. That That's how Oklahoma state's going to continue to win games. And I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not scared for Oklahoma state fans. Scared's not the right word, but it just feels like the inevitable letdown is coming at some point. And I don't know if that's, it would be so awesome if Bedlam was two undefeated teams, like sign me up for that. I'm all for it. I just don't know. I just don't know if it's going to happen. Like I, I would not be shocked if Oklahoma state went to Ames this weekend and lost by two touchdowns. Wouldn't surprise me at all, but Oklahoma State's a six and zero football team, undefeated. Yeah, ranked number eight in the country. They're ranked number eight right now. If if they were undefeated, whenever we play the last game of the season, you might be talking about number three versus number five, something like that. Two versus four. Like depending on how everything, because a lot of those Big Ten teams are about to start playing each other, and they're going to start falling out. That's going to happen. So you'd have, for the first time, maybe close to a top five matchup but in state. That would be wild. Don't mess it up, Oklahoma State. Also, don't mess it up, Oklahoma. But we're right. all looking at you, Oklahoma State. Don't mess it up. <laughs> God, there's so much season to be played, though. Yep. Man. But Exciting times in Stillwater. Okay, next game, Kentucky goes to Athens, Georgia, and doesn't get completely destroyed. I'd say thoroughly dismantled, but not just utter <laughs> destruction for the Wildcats. Uh, Georgia 30, Kentucky 13. Kentucky, <laughs> they're petty asses. They scored on the last play of the game, basically the last play of the game, and covered when they did it. So shout out to Heck Mark yeah. Stoops for uh, – for knowing the spread there, but Ted, some people with the way some people are acting, you may think the sky is falling in Athens, Georgia, because Georgia's defense allowed a team to score two touchdowns in a game. So well, that's just, I mean, shocking. I agree with them. Hey, if you're going to set a standard, you need to live up to it. Okay. You see how pissed they were after, after they scored that touchdown. First of all, Kentucky calls timeout to make sure that they can get another play. They score the touchdown. And the Georgia's so pissed. They run over like the entire offensive line for Kentucky and they blocked the PAT. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. So they uh, were, they were furious. And I saw some of the quotes from the Georgia guys on the defensive line after the game, like they were not happy. They, you're right. you you talk about a standard. It's, it is alive and well on the defensive side of the ball there for the I dogs. didn't see those quotes. They were mad. What, what, who were they mad at? Themselves? They were mad at themselves. Yeah. For allowing them to score. They're like, that's like, we don't, we don't let people in our end zone. That's what one guy said. I was like, oh, what a quote. Yes. So that's just, I mean, you compare what George is doing defensively. And then you think about the struggles Oklahoma's going. You're like, man, it feels like there is a just the Grand Canyon in between those two defenses right now. And it wasn't supposed to be that way, but that all being said, it was 14 to seven at the half of this game. Yeah. Right. So uh, I do want to give Kentucky some credit, but it's it never felt like team. they, it never felt like they were going to win the game. It, it really didn't. Even though they rocked some sick Chrome helmets, those things, yeah. I, I felt like I could see myself just watching them on TV in them, but they couldn't run the rock, man. 51 yards rushing. Chris Rodriguez, we talked about he coming into this game, leading rusher in the SEC. Ted, seven yards rushing for Chris Rodriguez. Brutal. Seven. Well, uh, that's how good Georgia is. But here's the thing. The difference in those two rosters is substantial. And what Kirby Smart gets out of his roster is – amazing but i think what mark stoops get gets out of his roster is almost equally as impressive no i'm with you 
he uh, he's a hell of a football coach. And remember, good teams win, great teams cover. And the cat's covered, baby. But Will Levis, he he did some good things, you know, a quarterback for Kentucky, uh, throwing around, but just, you know, with their inability to run it, it just wasn't a winning formula. It's not the way that Kentucky wants to play offensively. And meanwhile, you look at what Georgia did offensively, ran it efficiently again. Now they only had three members of their running back law firm, Ted. Only three guys. McIntosh was out. He wasn't there. But uh, White and Cook and Milton were all available, and they were all effective. Stetson Bennett, man, excuse me, Stetson was solid again. I I mean, he was really good in play action, did some things with his legs again. He may have found a new favorite target in Brock Bowers, the tight end. Who I guess is, is he a freshman? That's impressive is he, if he is, but I, I can't imagine them going back to JT Daniels after the way that Stetson Bennett has played. And what is, is it JT's shoulder? Is that what's going it's, on? It was, it's his lat. Lat? A lat strain. Mm. Yeah, I don't, Stetson, he's been, just kind of know your role, right? Be smart with the ball. Take some shots whenever you get an opportunity, but the the biggest goal playing offense at Georgia right now is do not put your defense at a disadvantage out there. You take what they give you. You lean on the running game. When you got an open guy, you hit him. Every now and then you hit a play action, take a shot down the field, but do not do anything stupid with that football. And I feel like he's he's kind of settled into that role. A year ago, Got a little wild at times trying to do some stuff, but I think he knows knows what they expect out of the quarterback spot right now. And is it good enough to win a national championship? I don't know. That's the big question. It depends on how good Caleb Williams can get in a couple months, right? I agree. Huh? I, uh, I agree. But, I agree. Uh, okay, so the, this last game, we, we previewed it because we, we thought, the coach's job was on the line. Turns out that whole thing had already been settled, right? Okay. So Florida goes to Baton Rouge and loses the, the Tigers play hard. They look good. They win 49, 42. Now, Ted, I thought we were going to come on here and make fun of Dan Mullen, even though I, I thought he made a smart decision going to Anthony Richardson. It's clear that Richardson's the more talented of the two guys between him and Emory Jones. He did some really good things. That dude is a physical freak. And yeah, he had a couple of bad plays. Can't throw the ball to the other team, especially in key situations. And he did that. So, but for whatever reason, like Dan Mullen won't say anything good about him. It's very bizarre. I don't, I, I think it's well established how we feel about Dan Mullen on this podcast. But hell, I even thought that maybe we'd come on here and talk about Ty Davis Price but he sets the LSU single game rushing record in this game. They just run it all over Florida's ass. Just bulldoze them. They're playing. I I was watching that game and I kept, uh, I was kind of in and out of the room and I kept looking up and thinking, is that a replay or is that live? Oh, that's live. Wow. (laughs) That's because they kept running the same play. I know. (laughs) It just, they were gashing them. And I don't know if, I don't know if you saw this, but Herb street on game day, He basically was like, hey, the new thing at LSU is they don't play hard. They don't care. That's that's LSU now. I don't know if they heard that and they came out and played the way they did because of that. I don't know. But I figured the way that they played and the fact that they won the game, that it was a decent sign for Ed Orgeron's future, right? Even if it was only extended it a couple weeks. Turns out they had already come to a separation agreement before this game was even played. Fascinating. It's so weird. So if you, if you haven't heard coach O and LSU have made an agreement that he will complete this season, but he won't be back for 2022. Now, once this was announced, some things started leaking out. Sounds like our man coach O was, uh, acting a bit a bit of a fool off the field and maybe that bled onto the practice field there was one person that was like yeah he brings his girlfriends to practice and sometimes the girlfriend's kids like jump in the drills during practice i was like wait 
what is that? I don't know if that's actually true. It's out there. It's out there. Allegedly true. But Ted, what a weird situation. I mean, they just won. They played maybe their best game of the season. Yeah. And it's one of those things where the administration at LSU, I'm sure, was they were probably expecting to be able to come out after this game after a loss to Florida and announce that. Right. But, uh, you go out there, (laughs) they win and you end up announcing it anyway. That's pretty funny. Right. Come up with your, your best win of the season and you announce that your coach is being let go. At least they let Ross Dellinger or made Ross Dellinger hold it until like noon the next day. They didn't just let him fire it off right after the game, which I'm sure he had that in the drafts ready to go if they would have lost that game. But Hey, credit to those kids. I will say, I like Max Johnson, a quarterback. I like the way he plays. He's efficient. How about that hook shot touchdown. That was crazy. Dude, what was that? Like that game was entertaining as hell. Just it kept was, going. It was a kept fun scoring. game. And I was, I was fired up for the kids and, Kind of fired up for Coach O, and lo and behold, separation agreement. By the way, what a term between a school and a coach. Separation agreement. All right, man.